We've got to develop systems for identifying those errors and learning from them. They're much more important than the errors of commission. Well, even in Iraq, it's not what we've done that's so bad, it's what we didn't do. What is it that we didn't do that causes us so much trouble? We have even difficulty to formulate such a question. Here's one corporation that gives an annual prize for the best mirror that was made last year. Best mistake. And people always laugh when I tell them that. They have a banquet and a, and a cash award for the best mistake made last year. They say it's a mistake from which the corporation learned most. August Bush once put up a poster around the executive suite of Anheuser-Busch that had a marvelous statement on it. It said, if you didn't make a serious mistake last year, you didn't do your job. You didn't try anything new. But if you ever make the same mistake twice, you won't be here next year. <laughs> okay to make a mistake, a high tolerance of it, but no tolerance for not learning from it. Now, one of the things we're trying to teach people is democracy. This is what's trying to be done in Iraq. You can't teach democracy. It can be learned, but it can't be taught. And what the people who are executing public policy don't recognize is that autocracy is natural. Democracy is not. You see, you're raised in a family, and a family is not democratic. You're raised under conditions which tell you the position, people in the position of authority have a right to tell you what to do and to protect you. You're raised in an autocracy. However benevolent the autocracy is, the family is autocratic. You have to learn democracy subsequently. It doesn't come easily. But here we come along on a, in a culture which is not only autocratic in the family, but very, very strongly and almost extremely so, trying to impose a very different kind of culture on it and thinking this can be done from the outside. You see, this development is a matter of learning. I can't learn for you. You can only learn for yourself. I can't develop you. Self-development is the only kind of development. I can facilitate it, encourage it, accelerate it, but I can't do it for you. And our people don't understand that. We can't develop other countries. We can assist them in their development, and we know how to do it, or at least some people do. In Mexico, a while back, a government agency, PDER, and members of the faculty of the University of Puebla and the National University of Mexico formed a team. And working with an incredible man in the what's called the Secretary of the Presidencia in Mexico. It corresponds to the OMB in the United States, the Office of Management and Budget. We're given by Mr. Iriart $42,000 to give to a small community that was remote to promote its development. A little tiny community up in the Sierra Mountains, Sierra Madras Mountains called Satillo was selected. It was four hours by Jeep from the closest town. It was a group of Indians who had retreated under the invasion of Mexico by Cortez, who never acknowledged the government of Mexico. It considered itself to be an autonomous nation and it still spoke the Indian language, didn't speak Spanish. That community was approached and said, you have $42,000 to invest in development, but it can only be spent for development, and the decisions as to how to use it must be made democratically. They said, how do we do that? What's that? And we said, well, you got a little town square, Sokolo. Have a town meeting in the square. There were about 300 families in the village. And there you decide how you're going to use the money. I'll never forget the first meeting. We had to have two translators, one to translate from the Indian language to Spanish and one from the Spanish back into English. So it was a little awkward. But we made clear we had this money deposited in the bank in the closest village that was available to them to use for development. One of the elders of the village got up and said, look, we can save a lot of time and trouble. There are approximately 300 families in the community take the $42,000, divide it by 300, give us each our share and go away. We said, that's not development, that's charity, that's welfare. Well, what's development? So we started to explain, and they began to explore to find out what it meant. 
they said, does developing irrigation ditches, would that be developed? So we could irrigate our crops. Yeah, that would be okay. Can we buy oxen to pull the plow? Yeah, that would be okay. Can we set up a cooperative buying facility? And gradually they learned by example what development meant. And they settled in to regular town meetings to make decisions about development in that little remote village. Democracy can be learned, but they can't be taught. So what you have to give is the opportunity and the conditions under which the learning is possible. Now what can we as systems thinkers do about all that? I have a couple of proposals. The first is the systems community takes the education of public policy makers and decision makers seriously. It doesn't. Look at the literature we produce. If you want examples of scholastic activity of contemplating your navel and counting the number of angel, angels on the point of a pin. It's the system's literature. There's virtually no application appearing anywhere in the literature, not even in other than the public domain. It's all low-grade philosophy, most of it. It's not even respectable philosophy. Now, the thinking that's done is much better than the literature. So one thing we've got to do is convert the literature to be effective against the people we're trying to affect. And so I propose that the Principal Society for Systems Thinkers, IS, -S, that it publish a journal, a journal that might be called Systems Thinking and Public Affairs, that would be distributed widely among people in various governments making public policy and decisions, It'd be distributed at no cost and it'd be underwritten by the members of the system society by voluntary contributions if necessary. But let's have a formal means of communicating to these people and address them and talk to them meaningfully. We don't use a very simple question in most of the literature we produce. So what? I was talking with Mike Jackson about this last night. He was a wonderful editor of the principal journal in systems, systems research and behavioral sciences. He complains he doesn't get the kind of articles he would want. We talk to each other at best, and we don't even do that well. We publish mostly for recognition from the people of grand tenure. That's the real objection of publication. It's not communication at all. It's self-aggrandizement and satisfaction of our own egos. We've got to start to write for other purposes. The second thing I would suggest is that every university, and particularly those that get any public support, develop development projects to work with communities, regions, or nations to assist them as a resource that's available to them to help them develop. That's what happened in Saltillo in Mexico. It's what happened to Mantua, a black neighborhood here just north of the university, where a university becomes a resource available to a community to assist it in doing what it wants to do. The great danger, people say, is they're going to make mistakes. That's exactly what you want. You know that during the 1960s, the United States had an agency called the Small Business Administration. It financed small entrepreneurial efforts to create businesses. It went out of business. Why? Over 80% of its loans were the blacks. Over 50% of the black businesses created failed within a year. And so they discontinued. They said it's a bad investment. They never asked the question, what percentage of white businesses fail in the first year? Do you know what it was? 22 out of every 23 white businesses failed in the first year. You see, the difference between the white and the blacks is the white were given the chance to learn from their mistakes and the blacks were. We have to learn to be tolerant of mistakes and use them systematically to learn. And the third thing is we have to stop talking to academics. One of the nice things about this gathering is there are so few academics and they're inclined, I hope, by the end of this to hide. <laughs> if you can't answer in anything you write or speak, 
with an answer to the question, so what? Then you ought to keep quiet. Thank you.